It's another beautiful evening. We thank the Lord who has enabled us to go through the entire week. We are from Monday up to this day, which is a Friday. And I believe this voice and this image finds you well. We bless the Lord for this. I welcome you to Health Pot. Health Pot is a program centered around early childhood development, maternal health, and other public health concerns. And Edwin Austin Mukalas is my name, your host. This program is brought to you by Makere University School of Public Health, together with Church of Uganda Family TV. And we are delighted this day and this entire month to talk about um, issues to do with the eyes, issues to do with vision, issues to do with sight. So don't miss every single Friday at exactly 7 p.m. We shall be bringing you the very best. And this particular day, this particular evening, we are delighted to have the one who is going to share with us a lot of information you need to know when it comes to vision. He's none other than Mr. Anguio Joel Dralega. Um, Mr. Anguio is a coordinator of optimal um, of <laughs> optometry, <laughs> optometry at uh, Makere University School of Health Sciences in the Department of Allied Health Sciences. But he's also the managing director of Med Optics. Uh, when we talk about optics, then we know what we mean. So we are delighted to have him today in Healthport, going to share with us issues to do with vision, Mr. Drelig. You're most welcome to Thank Healthport you. today. Thank you. Yes. 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 Kindly greet our viewers and then we shall go on. Um, good evening, viewers. As uh, uh, Mr. Edwin has said, my name is Anguyo Dralega. I do work for Macro University as a coordinator and also a lecturer at the School of Optometry at Macro University under the School of Health Sciences. Um, thank you very much for having this chance, for having me, yes. to be able to explain one or two things about the eyes. Mm. And um, most of my life has been in the eye business, if you like it. Mm. And uh, right now I decided to join the Macro University to train more eye professionals. And this country is short of eye professionals. Mm. And so um, uh, me and uh, my colleague, Dr. Naomi Nsubga, we both trained outside. I trained the UK, she trained the US. And uh, when we arrived here, um, early 20s, we realized that uh, the field of optometry was non-existent. And we thought our knowledge and uh, education could be duplicated to actually help more Ugandans wow. so that they can be able to see better. Wow. So we, the confidence we have is that we are talking to the right person. One, a person who has the experience, but also the knowledge. Correct. Wow. <laughs> so uh, we get now to our guest of yes. this program. What is vision uh, according to optometry? Um, is a very, very broad uh, question, really, mm. to talk about the vision. But being a, a Christian TV station, and I know a lot of our audience here do read the Bible, yeah. I just want to quote from the, from the Bible, Matthew, uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 22, which says that the eye is the lamp of the body. So if eye is sound, your whole body will be full of light. And so we are in the business of creating that aware and ensure that your vision is actually very good, your eye is very good. Among of the, all the senses, um, I think the, the, the sense of vision is one of the most important. Once you lose it, it's very debilitating. You have to rely in most cases on other people um, for a lot of things which you can do. And so the, when you ask me what is vision, Vision is basically the, the, the sense of being to appreciate objects in space and to know what exactly they are. Mm. In broad, in layman's language, I would say that. Scientifically, that's like a four-year thesis um, dissertation to mm. answer that question, <laughs> what, what vision is. Okay. Yeah. So, um, because we're basically looking at uh, vision, but we want to rely more on children. Yes. Because this, uh, this program is centered around children because we are looking at, uh, we are considering early childhood development and we now want to consider the children because we know, is there any, any incident that a child can be born with uh, vision problems? 
there are a lot of instances where children can be born with vision problems. And to start with, by the way, um, I think most of the people who are watching us have got two eyes. Yes. And uh, they only see one television set. Mm. They see one of me or one of you or mm. one of uh, our lady who is uh, doing the interpretation. The question is, why don't they see two if you have two eyes? Has so one, ever, eyes, one eye sees you, one eye sees me. I, ideally, that should be the really the. Really or one scenario. eye sees me and the other and eye the other sees one, me yes. both. But it doesn't happen, does it? No. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. So that is basically the science behind that. It's actually absolutely very complex. Mm. How, you know, you have two eyes, but you only see one object. This is what we call binocular vision. Binocular mm. single vision. Which means you have two eyes, but you're seeing single. Mm. And um, when you are born, in early childhood, the eyes are not really that very much co um, coordinated. But as you keep growing, the, the eye feeds, the information feeds the brain, and then the brain develops. And so that you, the two images are superimposed together, and then you see one. It's a very complex and very delicate uh, process, which should not be interrupted. And unfortunately, sometimes that's interrupted. I.e., one eye is looking this way, one eye looking that way. They don't look in the same direction. The reason they don't look in the same direction in most cases in early ages is that there are some obstruction. For example, they need to wear glasses for, um, where the prescription is very high in one eye and they look very good in the other eye. So the brain will take the image the, of, of the eye of the good eye and ignore the one of the bad eye. Eventually the bad eye drifts away. Mm -hmm. That's what we call um, strabismus or um, um, uh, yeah, that is the technical term of it, or squint, commonly known as. Yes. But squint can also be used in so many other terms, like when people have closed their eyes, mm. they say you are squinting yes. sometimes. So it's mm. very, it's not really very direct. Mm. The other thing is there's something called cataract. Mm. So I think in this region they call it insane. Insane. Yeah, if I can, yeah, 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 if I can remember it correctly. Mm. Um, unfortunately, some children are born with this particular um, uh, cataract. Ideally, cataract is a, a disease of the old people, mm. above 70s, 80s, 90s. If they do get the cataract, we, are, we assume that that's normal, but it's really not normal for children. So when children are born with that, it blocks the, uh, the light, as I said earlier, the brain needs the, the, the information to be able to develop. Mm. As that blockage happens, you find that the eyes will not develop properly, the brain, of, the sense of seeing will not develop properly. And so the eye will go some, some the other way around. Mm -hmm. Another disease in children are born with is called a juvenile glaucoma. Again, glaucoma is, most cases, a disease of adults. But mm -hmm. unfortunately, some few children are born. This is a group of diseases which cause the, the, the pressure within the eyeball mm -hmm. to actually be more higher than normal. Mm -hmm. Now, every eye is like a ball, OK? And within that ball, there are a lot of tissues and the fluids. And those tissues and fluids must be kept at a certain optimum pressure. Mm. What we call um, the, 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 that pressure must be maintained. Sometimes the both eyes will have separate different pressures. But sometimes, in most cases, they are exactly the same. Your pressure is not equal to the next person. So yeah. you want to mean that my pressure is yes. not equal it's to not, that. It's not the same like mine. And it's not the same as Mabel's pressure. Exactly. So everybody has got the, what we call the optimum pressure for themselves. Mm. Now this pressure varies from about, we, we measure it in millimeter mercury. It varies from about 67 up to 21. Is it natural that the, the pressure varies all? Yes, it is natural. Okay. That's why I was saying that every individual has got their own pressure. Mm. Now, if your pressure is 10, mm. okay, and uh, somebody's pressure is 15, they're all considered normal mm. because they're between 6 or 5 up to 21. Mm. Now, the, the complexity happens is that if you who has got pressure 10, now tomorrow comes you have pressed 15 that's abnormal mm. because your press supposed to be 10 yes. not 15. Mm. now that high pressure will destroy the nerves at the back of the eye the challenge is now for the clinicians to find out which one is the true pressure for you mm. so that's the reason why sometimes you always say that please people should go for a routine eye examination mm. they should have their pressure checked and then you know the baseline so next time you come today you come your press is 10 next time you come is 15 you say ah, ah. Something is not right here. Your press is supposed to be 10, it is 15 now, so let's do more investigation. 
and so see that, what has caused the yeah, what has caused the it, yes, and how what can we do about mm. it? And uh, this particular disease mostly affects older people, and it, unfortunately, it also runs in the family. If your father or mother has got a pressure, there's high chance that the children also have a pressure. And so, again, somebody needs to know that and advise people. But mostly this is for older people. Mm. But for younger people, yes, it does happen. You ask me about the uh, problems in the younger children. Yes. So um, those are very common. Sometimes children are born with abnormalities. We don't know how what happened. It just mm. comes the child has got abnormalities. And um, a lot of this will be picked up where if you have a very good antenatal um, uh, management mm. and then also uh, if the child is born in the hospital for example the doctor will be able to examine the child and do all the necessary tests and then be able to advise the parents very well. So can can some of these problems be detected at antenatal? Well, rarely, rarely can be detected at antenatal. The only issue is that during antenatal um, times because there are issues with hypertension for example mm. Um, uh, I think they're called preeclampsia. Yes. So um, those really, really um, need to be uh, attended to. There is a um, um, uh, diabetic diabetes or pregnancy, which are some the mothers mm. do have diabetes, mm. and that also will affect the fetus. So that needs to be taken care of mm. very well. And then, unfortunately, there are issues to do with the rubella. Mm. Okay, these non communicable diseases, the rubella and the things like to be with the gonorrhea mm. and all those um, um, STDs. So those will affect the child. And so the issue with rubella and the gonorrhea and all that. Rubella, for example, you find that the child will come with some deformities or will have a lot of eye complications. And so if those are detected early, you know, during the dental attendance and things like that, and then the doctor will be able to, to, to be dealt with. Okay. Yeah. Wow, this is this is a very interesting conversation. So, uh, Doctor, before we get <coughs> the subject, uh, I have one more concern. Mm. When a mother gives birth to a child, we see a child's eyes open, mm. but this child cannot see. Mm. What brings that? Because very many mothers might be asking themselves, what causes this? Okay, <laughs> um, it's like asking the child why the child is not walking when they are born. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, mother, don't ask why the child not walking. Yeah. I don't know why they want to force the child to see. <laughs> okay. Because they see the eyes open, uh, yes, they try to the eyes, they yes, see. the eyes open, he's moving all over mm. the place. Mm. So, you know, as I told you earlier in the beginning, when a child is born, the sense are not fully developed, mm. and so. For the eyes to develop very well, they need that sense or be able to light to get into the eyes, and then the light um, um, is, is, is transmitted to the brain. By the way, you see, we don't see with our eyes, yeah. we see with our brain. Uh -huh. Yes. So a lot of people actually do forget that the thing you see with your eyes. Not even forget, <laughs> they don't know. Yes, they, they don't know now. They know. That. Yes. <laughs> so it is like this camera here. Mm. Okay? The eye is just the, 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 the lens you see inside in there. Mm. Okay? Now, there's a lot happening behind that lens. And if you remove everything happening by that, behind that lens, you just leave the lens alone, you think you're going to get any pictures? No. You won't. That's the reason why. When somebody knocks you at the, at the back here, mm. you actually go blind. Okay? Here, 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 the back here is the engine for, for you to be able to see. And the back here is wired from the eye here up to the brain here is wired. Mm. completely okay so should anything happen between the eye and the wiring of the brain in there the eyes will not develop very well okay. so we know we started this conversation about what will how will the eye develop yes so the, the things I enumerated earlier if they are there the baby will continue not seeing and mm. the vision will not develop so it is the interest of the mother the doctors and everyone else to ensure that there's no obstruction of the child's vision. So as the child can begin to grow in the next two or three days, you find that actually the eyes begin to stretch now, begin to identify things. By the time the child reaches three or four, five months, is even grabbing the mother's hands. Yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. And that means that now the vision system is developing very well. So the incumbent is all of us to ensure that this child's vision grows very well because the child with the poor vision is going to affect the entire life. We are looking at 70, 80, 90 year span of life here. Mm -hmm. So you want to do your best to ensure that this child's vision is very good. Mm -hmm. So, Doctor, this, according to what you've explained, means that if a child, because there are instances where a child fails to open their eyelids, uh, they fail to open and then you see a mother 
panicking. My child is going to be blind. So it means that is not the definition of blindness. That's not the definition of blindness at all. Because there are a lot of reasons why the mm. child may not open their eyes. Mm. Um, the lids, as you see, these lids here closing the eyes, mm. they are very, very complex. Mm. There's a lot of innovation in the lids, you know, which makes you to blink, move it up and down. That action of blinking, by the way, um, if you don't blink, eventually you'll go blind. It is that bad. Okay. Because the eye, the front of the eye constantly needs to be bathed with the fluid, which is called the tear fluid. Okay? And that bathing of the front makes it nice, smooth, and then that smoothness makes the light to go, we call it a refraction. Mm. Because the light comes from all the way, and then it has to be bent to go exactly at the back of your eye. At the back of your eye, there's a very sensitive spot, which we call it the, the fovea centralis. But fovea, or the most sensitive part for the lay person. It is as big as the p head of a pin. Mm. Yes, very, 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 very small. And that is the most sensitive part of the eye. So that's why you find the front of the eye is curved like this. Yes. So that all the light is actually bent exactly to that mm. particular point. From that point, it is not transmitted through the wires into the brain for interpretation for you to be able to see. So the front of the must be smooth all the time. Okay, God is designed it so that it's nice and smooth and there should be no obstruction of it. So in the beginning, if the eyelid is not open, which means that the nerves, which are supposed to close the eye and move it up and down, may have a problem. Mm. So the, the, the what called the pediatric ophthalmologist mm. then will attend to that. When it comes to nerves, it's quite complex. You may need the pediatric ophthalmologist or you may need a neurologist mm. to be able to assess that child to see, okay, what is the problem with the child and why the child is not opening their, their lids. But invariably, in most cases, maybe just one or two hours after that, the child will both open their eyes. So a mother doesn't need to panic. They don't need to panic, but then so long as you have your, um, the, 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 the nurse there available, mm. and then you have, if the nurse cannot, the nurse will know who to conduct to be able to help them. Okay. Yeah. Wow. We are taking a short commercial break. We shall be right back. Thank you so much for watching Health Pods. This is a program brought to you by Makere University School of Public Health. Together with Church of Uganda Family TV, Erin Osin Mukalas is my name, your host, uh, together with Mebom Runji, our sign language interpreter. And we have Dr. Angio, who is uh, taking us through vision. So, Doctor, before the commercial break, you had told us a lot about the eye and the science, how the, this, the, the, what we see as the eye receives the image and how the brain interprets it. Now, we realize that uh, Ugandans are so reluctant when it comes to checkups. Sometimes you wait until when we are... Bed, we are I exactly. Yeah, yeah. And, and some people don't even show up. Yeah. And then that is when we shall go for checkups. Yeah. But how often and uh, how should someone do this checkup? Um, thank you, Mr. Bukalas. The idea of a checkup is we in, in medicine we say prevention is better than cure. Yeah. And it is true. Mm. Uh, for a lot of ailments, a lot of diseases, if they are detected early, mm. actually help can be given. Yeah. Classic example is one I told about the glaucoma. Mm. This glaucoma disease, unfortunately, in most cases you can only detect it when you go for eye examination. There are different types of glaucomas which will cause the disease. But the main one is what we call primary glaucoma. Mm. The primary glaucoma um, increases the pressure within the eyeball without you knowing. Nobody knows until a clinician tests for it, that's then they will discover that, okay, this pressure looks very high. Once it goes beyond 24, 25, 26, there are people who have got pressures up to 30, it's normal. But by the time you reach 25, 26, most clinicians will be concerned, okay? Yeah. And then they do additional tests to confirm. And then some of them call you every six months just to test to ensure that um, the pressure is actually normal, the no tissue is getting damaged. Mm. In terms of screening, ideally if you do not have any um, eye disease or there are no eye complications within the family, every two years is allowed. For those who have got eye complications, other diseases, they really need to go to see a clinician every year, mm. once in a year. And I, I hear a sort of um, uh, a complaint from uh, some of my clients sometimes, they said, but why are you charging for eye tests? Mm. But really, have you ever tried to go to a lawyer and you're not charged? 
No. Try, try to go to your lawyer and they see, say, okay, can I have this? Unless the lawyer says, I'm going to do it pro bono. You know, that's the term they use. Yes. You will never be able to, um, uh, you'll never be able to get a free service. These clinicians train mm. for so many years. You see, you go to university for four, or for four or five years, and then you go to do another additional training for another two years, mm. and then you specialize another two or three years. All this training costs money. The clinician needs to be rewarded for the time they do. Mm. And so you guys should learn to appreciate that these things cost money. And if somebody says, please pay me X amount of money for the examination, mm. do so. It is for your own benefit. And, and some well to do people still want free eye examinations. <laughs> In the evenings, they go and they drink three or four, five beers. That money is enough for eye examination, okay? To pay the clinician. Mm. So please, let's, let's accept the fact that you are responsible for your own health. Mm. For children, um, in other countries, they start visual screening with the, with the, with the um, what do you call the uh, nurses who attend to the bath? The midwives. Midwives, yes. Mm. The midwives start the screening. And then they visit the home after two weeks to assess how the child is. And eye screening is a part of that. And then uh, in about a year, they also screen. So preschool, before the ch these kids go to school, they screen. So by the time the child goes to school, you know that whether there's any visual problem or not. And if there is, it is attended to. So again, that's what I call prevention. Mm. So that way, at least, you know, you do, you do not allow a preventable disease to persist. Yeah. Uh, affect the child. And I told you, this child is going to live for another 60, 70, 80 years or 90, 100 years. So you want to give them the best. Yes. So what is the importance of all this? Because we talked about how yeah. the, the checking is done. But what, why? Because someone would ask, but then why should I test? And why should I check my child? Why should I take my child who is going to school for a checkup? Much as you've told us that you want to be sure that uh, their vision is fine. Mm -hmm. You remember when we started, we read the verse? Yes. The eye is a lamp of the body. Mm. So if your eye is sound, your mm. whole body will be full of light. <laughs> if your eye is not sound, there's trouble happening in there. Mm. And you need to ensure that, you know, the eye, most of the development um, for the child comes through vision. Yes. The ears, all, the ears, other senses, but the uh, the vision, the eye contributes a lot of the development of the child. So it is imperative for you to be concerned that the child has got a very good vision. Because even um, when we have uh, Mabel Murungiawasa and language interpreter, she's doing it because someone exactly, can exactly, able to see even when able, they can't hear. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. So they are able to appreciate that because they can actually see. Mm -hmm. And so um, vision itself is really, really, I cannot emphasize the importance long enough. Mm. And um, you are blessed if you can get access to be able to ensure that your vision is very good mm. and that you're able to get help when it is needed. Mm. So, uh, Doctor, as we wind up, uh, what is your last message when it comes to vision? Uh, t tell our parents out there how important uh, vision is and how much they should give it time. Well, at least it is best for the parents to know that my child's vision is good at least once every two years to take the child for screening. Let the doctors say that the child's vision is good, not assume that because they can see things, the child's vision is good. There's a small disease which we call a uh, defect, we call it hypermetropia or hyperopia or long-sightedness in, in, in layman's language. Long-sightedness can affect the child in that they can actually be able to see most things clearly. But in the evening, they always come with a headache. Mm. Say they have a headache. The reason is the eye is constantly focusing. And if that is not correct, it will affect the child's education. Okay? You do not want your child's education to be affected. And because at the end of the day, that education is the key for the success of their life for this particular child. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Angio Joel Draliga, who is a coordinator but also a lecturer at Makere University College of Health Sciences in the Department of Allied Health Sciences. He's uh, a lecturer uh, on the Optometry Program and Mebo Murungi, our sign language interpreter. This program is brought to you by Makere University School of Public Health together with Church of Uganda Family TV. Edwin Austin Mutalazi is my name. I've worked with Jonah Jal, the producer, and in transmission there is Bantam. God bless you. We meet again next time.